Hi everyone, I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and it is time to finally dye the full-size colorways for 2020 Hanukkah. <laughs> right now I'm going to prototype the colorway I want to create on Shimmer Fingering from Wool to Dye For. This yarn is 90% Superwash Merino, 10% Lurex. And the Lurex is actually a ply in the yarn. So it happens like at a regular rate, it's less random, it's still super, super shiny and soft, but this is definitely going to pop more once we add a lot of color, and I plan to add a lot of color. And so what I learned last year is that teeny tiny subtle speckles don't really show up on this very well, because I mean, I think it would show up well if I left the base white, but because of that silver popping, that sort of dominated the navy speckles. And so therefore it wasn't the one I selected last year, which made me more determined to use it this year. Uh, so I have a few ideas and I'm gonna talk about this a little bit in my Hanukkah vlog as I'm trying to decide what to do. But right now I want to do something similar to the type of colorway I created when whatever month was the clock inspiration for the Chemnitz dye along. And I think what I wanna do is paint on the countertop at least two, so at least the ends will be a deep solid color. And I'm considering also making this mid center portion right here a dark saturated color, and then speckling on the countertop with dry powder in between, using three or four different colors at varying amounts, um, and then followed by steam setting. And so that should give some larger speckles um, and splotches, but I think could be really, really fun. And yeah, so that's my vision, but we'll see how well it turns out on the base. And if I don't love it, on the prototype, we can either tweak the colors or I have another technique in mind, so we can go to that. I just popped a reusable nylon zip tie onto here and let's go ahead and pre-soak this yarn. But while I have your attention, if you wanna learn more about any of the tools or equipment that I use, I have a lot of affiliate links down in the video description. So you should check that out because in all my videos, I always try to let you know what I'm using, especially when it comes to the yarn base. So that way, if you wanna to try to replicate my results, you can. Here in my basin, I have a, maybe a third or a quarter full of water, and I'm gonna add a splash of vinegar. Um, I want there to be a lot of acid in the yarn, so that way the colors will strike quickly. But whenever I pre-soak yarn with acid, I don't often measure the volume of water or the amount of acid, so I don't have like an accurate pH. Um, so there will be some differences between the 12 to 15 skeins that I will be dyeing in this colorway, but I am really excited. And actually, one small thing for me to check. Okay, my counter is long enough. <laughs> I wanted to make sure I'd be able to lay out the whole thing on the counter or if I wanted to alter my setup to make that a little easier, but I think that this will work really well. I think this is our sparkle palette. I want to speckle with some fluorescent fuchsia, let those pinks give it, you know, they might spread a bit. Uh, or did I want purple pop instead? I changed my mind. I want some pink, which we'll get from the purple pop, but I also want that speck that we get from how it breaks. True turquoise, because I want a bright blue and I promised myself I was not gonna use frozen. <laughs> And then electric violet, and these are the, gonna be the three main for the speckles with potentially some intense iris speckles in there as well. These colors actually look like they're very similar, but I believe they're pretty different. And actually we will test these colors on a yarn mop that I have for this project. Okay, this is a skein of Knit Pick Stroll, 75% Superwash Merino, 25% Nylon. And let's just test these colors. So the intense iris, what I'm gonna do is I'm sticking a spoon in, just letting some of the color coat it, and then tapping it 
on the yarn that is soaked with vinegar. And I will finish wiping that off in a moment. I'm doing this instead of speckling with my fingers uh, to just give us a chance to see the colors a little faster. Okay, that one I have a little more of. So this is the intense, vi intense iris and the electric violet. So on the, the swatches, the colors look nearly identical, but the intense iris is a lot more blue. Okay, true turquoise is true to its name. It is a nice blue, beautiful bright blue. And then purple pop. Oof. All right, I'm already feeling excited. Purple pop, and this is the one where I'm gonna wanna be the most sparing. That's gonna bring more of that pink in. And this is our color palette for today. Now, what's gonna be happening on this particular skein is that I will be wiping my fingers on it uh, to leave no dye behind and just rinse less dye out uh, down the sink. But this is a very, very Rebecca palette, and I'm excited. I think I'm gonna to try to go really light with the blue and the purple pop and let this feel fairly purple overall, but I'm excited. Here I have a half percent stock solution of the Intense Iris. So I made a 1% stock solution and then I diluted it in half to give us this color. It is more purple than a navy, but it is still fairly uh, blue overall. I mean, it's very much like the color of an iris. And I was debating uh, if I should do a second color on the other side, but I think I'm gonna do this intense iris on both ends. And I think even zoomed out, you can see um, our silver uh, Lurex really shine through. Now my work surface is protected with plastic wrap on top of the uh, shower curtain that I have here. And this is because I'm gonna want to be able to wrap it up to steam set it. So our iris section does not end up taking over. And I'm actually debating, I think I do wanna finish the iris section before I start speckling. Uh, I could come back and paint the other side, but I think that splitting up the application of the dye into two steps will be pretty helpful. I'm hoping that I have enough of my stock solution made because I feel like I've used almost half, uh, about 100 milliliters of the liquid so far. But let's flip this over. Oh, okay, our color penetration is really, really good. Um, and I did not think to wipe uh, the counter in between. I like hand painting using just a foam brush. It gives me a bit of control, a little bit more than say a squeeze bottle. And so I enjoy that. And just wanna check inside the skin. Oh, perfect. Okay, so I have not yet done the mental calculation to make sure that I will have enough. Um, I probably will not. I will probably need to make more of the stock solution because if, yeah, I don't think I'll have enough for the number of skeins that I need to dye, but I like this color. And now I'm gonna get suited up to work on the speckles in the middle. But look at the way that silver is just popping in there. So pretty. I am now wearing a respirator mask and safety goggles in addition to wearing my gloves. Now the nice thing about this technique is that the color should end up penetrating pretty far. So I'm picking up a little bit of purple pop and then just very lightly 
going in with the purple pop, uh, taking just a tiny bit of powder and going over. And I feel like I maybe wasn't as light as I had intended, but in between each color, I'm gonna wipe my fingers here on the yarn mop to remove excess dye, and then either just dry off my fingers or rinse and dry off my fingers, so that way I don't contaminate the colors with other pigments. Um, because you don't want, what you really, really don't want is to uh, introduce purple pop into our turquoise. Whoop, I feel like that's a bit heavier than I wanted, but that's fine. I need to make sure I just spread this out a bit more. I don't need to worry about going all over. I just want pops of these colors. I love using the yarn mop to rinse off my hands. Okay. You want your you also want your hands to be as dry as possible before going into your jars because you don't want to introduce moisture in here because moisture will uh, cause well, not bad things to happen, but moisture can cause the powders to clump and then be less usable, which again is not what you want. So I went a bit heavier with our electric violet and I'm debating, I think I do want to pull a little of the intense iris through. The only thing I don't like is my intense iris jar is bigger, so it's a little harder to grab powder, but I'm just coming in with quote a little bit, <laughs> doing my best, doing my best, and then wiping my hands on the yarn mop as much as possible. So this is really pretty. It is very, very Rebecca. And I am now going to flip as carefully as I can the yarn over. And the reason why I'm saying careful is just that I don't want, um, I don't want to flame dye powder anywhere. But you can see that by touching it and moving it, the color is moving through. It's a little more spread out, but check it out. These colors are becoming like splotchy and super, super fun. Um, you do want to pay attention around the ties uh, that you're getting good color coverage though. My hands are dry and I'm going to try to make an effort to be even lighter as I go through this time. And remember that I don't need coverage absolutely everywhere, but I do pay attention to those edges um, because those edges, I don't know, you just don't want, I don't want any big, big white patches, if that makes sense. Okay, and turquoise, just taking a little bit of powder. I also want to pay attention, in addition to the edges, to the areas up near our color, our iris, because um, for the same reason. I don't want there to be like a large white patch there, but I'm happy if some white sticks around with us. Flipping the, I don't think you can see the yarn mop isn't on camera, but I'm flipping it so I can continue to wipe. And if it feels like I don't get all the color off of my gloves, that's when I would go and wash the gloves off before coming back. Okay, so now the electric violet. You know, it's handy for me to um, keep the violet and the intense iris apart that the, the jars are different sizes. Now there's always the worry that I will go way too big when doing this. And I say worry with sort of air quotes. Uh, remember my Hanukkah oops after all. I guess that one was from 2018, where I just added way too much powder. Way, way too much powder. Um, 
but I think that this is gonna be pretty good. Again, the colors are gonna spread out more. If I really wanted it to look like this in the end, I would have needed to go really, really, really soft. And I'm not going soft enough, so I think we'll have some beautiful spread. But the nice thing about it is that it is showing up so well and beautifully on this Lurex base. Um, and the Lurex is not overpowering it, which is great. Um, which is really great. Okay. Wahoo! And I have a colorway. I didn't use Frozen or Navy, even though it technically has colors that are very, very similar. Because, <laughs> I mean, that's just what I gravitate, gravitate towards. And, oh, man. Okay. Um, I am going to carefully put those back. And we're now going to wrap this up to steam set it. Um, it doesn't need to be wrapped, like, super super tight or anything. The goal is just to keep these speckled areas separate from the ends there. And now we just need to set up a steamer basket. I am probably not done with the yarn mop, but I felt that I may as well steam set it with our, uh, with our glimmer sparkle colorway. So I'm gonna steam set everything for 30 minutes here in my steamer basket. I just took everything out of the steamer basket. It is hot. But look at this. I want to open it because I don't want to wait. But I do want to make sure I am on camera for when I open. Ooh. Oh, that is awesome. That is so cool. And just what I was wanting. Oh, I love it. And checking. And the coverage is pretty good. Now, the last question that I have and checking. Okay, okay, there's maybe like one area, but the coverage is pretty darn good. And I love it, I love it, it's so fun. Okay, um, what I'm going to do now is let this cool so we can wash it, because I'm a little bit concerned just about the blue. There are some blues in my collection that sometimes, under some circumstances, cause a lot of bleeding. And that isn't what I want for this yarn, but this multicolored area is just awesome with the sparkle. It goes well together. It's not like diminute. Oh, this is great. This is just what I wanted and I'm thrilled. So I'm gonna let this cool, we'll wash it, and then uh, we can, I guess, explore doing more. But yeah, the yarn mop is beautiful, but we still have a lot of area where I can add more color. Um, setting it, letting it cool, it's still got the vinegar in there, so using it as a mop further is not a problem. Um, I just figured in case I decided it was done, and it could be done, but I wanna add more. In case I decided it was done, I figured that it was good to go ahead and set it. But now, I'll see you soon. Let's wash just the sparkle yarn. Now, I touched it a moment ago, and some blue came off on my hands. So I am expecting, I would not be surprised if I see some bleeding, some blue bleeding right now, because I think that there was some pigment that just didn't dissolve. Uh, so yeah, I, when I saw that, I was like, okay, maybe I need to uh, make sure to press a bit more. But um, hopefully, that will be it but we will see as we wash it and I can be try to be really sparing with the turquoise. I am now gonna add some dish soap into here. Please, oh please, oh please. Okay, I'm seeing some bleeding. Darn. Um, we will see if we end up needing to like full on submerge this, but what I'm going to do is let this soak in just some plain tap water for a little bit, because if there's something on here that just didn't dissolve and bind, let's give it that chance to dissolve 
and then maybe we can get it out. Although actually, that's looking pretty good. Um, so maybe it's not completely necessary. Maybe this really just isn't that bad, no. I mean, there's like a hair of something. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and let this sit in the water for a handful of minutes and then we'll come back. Okay, so I waited a little bit of time and it has not become any worse. It's a bit purplish to be honest, but something else occurred to me that with this technique, I have no idea if I'm reaching, but there could be some dye on the surface of the uh, Lorex because, you know, of the way that it's present. And so then maybe that just doesn't dissolve and it just needs a bit of a soak after. And that's not bad. That is not bad. Um, another thing I can do, okay, we're still bleeding. Yeah. This is distinctly uh, purple now versus blue. Again, it doesn't seem to be shifting the color that I see in here at all, but it is still color, nevertheless. So what I'm going to do is add a splash of vinegar and some water, and we will, and we will see what happens. All right, let's see. Yep, that little bit of vinegar stopped the bleeding. So what I'm gonna do is actually save this vinegar water and we are gonna rinse this with soap once more and see if the bleeding comes back. Um, it's possible just a little bit of soap with some more vinegar is all that is required. But if I notice when I'm washing multiple that a lot of bleeding starts to happen, then maybe I'll just pop them in to like an immersion pop just to reset. But it seems to me like there was just a little bit of something, a little bit of soap and water, and now I see absolutely no bleeding, which is perfect. <laughs> I always get nervous. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna try one more rinse. And wow, I see no, no more bleeding. All right, into the spin dryer we go. I'm glad that that little bit, I'm trying to tell, I'm trying to tell if the base is still white or if it picked up like a little bit of lavender or something. Either way, I don't really care. I love this colorway. I think that it is awesome. I think that this will knit up really awesome and fun. And it's just like a party. It's like a holiday party. I am not going to show the dyeing of all of this colorway that I am creating, um, but I wanted to comment on a few more things. I don't necessarily need the plastic wrap this time. Since these speckles are so heavy and there is some color spread, it's okay if there's a little bit of color transfer from the uh, intense iris onto the rest of the yarn since I had some of that color in there. However, if I was using a color on the ends that I didn't want to transfer, then this is a circumstance where I really would want to be able to wrap the yarn up in order to steam set it. But maybe if I can finally get my hands on a steam pan with a steamer tray, which would allow me to lay the yarn flat on there, that is a type of setup that would really allow me to not have color transfer. Or I suppose if I was gonna steam set one skein at a time, I could lay it in my little steamer basket in such a way that the uh, dark ends wouldn't touch the middle. So there are options that don't involve plastic wrap. I feel like my steamer baskets can fit three to four skeins, um, depending on, actually maybe the 12 quart pot can hold a little more, but I decided to do this in batches of three skeins because it felt like that was a manageable amount versus trying to really up this and go back and forth across my whole counter. In theory, I could have done a lot more, but doing small batches felt appropriate and felt uh, manageable for me. And so I popped on a podcast and had a lot of fun creating this bright, festive Hanukkah colorway. I don't know if you caught that really slick moment when I almost <laughs> knocked the whole bottle 
of dry dye out onto the yarn, but I saved it, I caught it. But this is a great example of why you wear safety glasses and a respirator mask. Uh, you don't want to risk throwing dye in your face. That would just be very, very, very bad for many reasons. Uh, so, <laughs> heed my advice and always wear proper safety equipment. I do have a blog post on uh, different brands of respirators. I use a P100 Deluxe Rubber Respirator from Dharma Trading Company, but it's been sold out. Um, for most of the summer because of the pandemic and everything. So uh, there are some other ones that were still available, at least of when I searched back in August 2020. And so that hopefully that blog post will help you track one down as you start to play with acid dyes. Instead of going lighter on this batch, I think in some places I might have gone even heavier. We will see if we see a big difference between the different skeins. I don't know if I'm going to strictly try to keep them in batch order, but I am going to try as I twist them up once the yarn is finished and dry uh, to keep ones that are similar, as similar as possible together. Uh, so that way, in case anyone had ordered more than one of these sparkle colorways, I can try to uh, give them a matched dye lot. But I'm going to do this by like physically comparing the end product. So we will see. I will show you all of the dry yarn at the end in the conclusions, which I guess you're about to see right now. Here are 13 skeins that I dyed, and I have them sort of twisted in this order for a reason. This is the first skein that we dyed, and then this is the one that I dyed on the time lapse. Um, they're pretty close, the colors. I started getting a little more heavy handed with the dye, but then I got more and more heavy handed. I would say these two are pretty similar. I think the main difference is I used a little bit more purple pop here, and a little bit more of that true turquoise in this last batch. Now, I also uh, have three more skeins drying that I have on the drying rack that I'm not showing in these conclusions, and those sort of fall here in this more intermediate range. But I think this goes to show <laughs> that any kind of technique where uh, you are pulling from dry powder where things aren't measured, it's you're going to end up with some variability because these were all even filmed on the same day. I just got more and more heavy handed as time went on. So it's worth keeping that in mind. Here's just another view. Uh, each of these four sections have three skeins sort of twisted together. There is a lot of similarity in between batches and I'll go ahead and show two in a moment, but, uh, whether it is the most saturated or the least, this yarn feels like a party and it makes me a celebration and it is so me and I am just in love with it. For another comparison's sake, here is that first skein that we dyed and then here is the one of the deepest. Uh, there is a huge difference in between them, but you could fade them together and that would be really, really cool. Um, I mean, I am going to make an effort uh, in case I don't remember if there's anyone who's getting two skeins of the sparkle colorway, but I'm going to make sure to match dye lot and I'm going to name the dye lots ABC, etc. So that way it can be easy. But this, the glitter from that sparkle in here is just awesome and it breaks up the, the darkness from the more saturated colorway in a really, really fun way. We have a lot of yarn mops from today. This may be one of the first times I had a yarn mop that I uh, set and then reused as a yarn mop along the way. And just the way these colors are layered together is so vibrant and pretty. And this would actually be harder for me to do um, and to get this amount of coverage without the colors blending if I was just doing it once. This skein was only done once, and while we still have some layering of colors, things are a lot more blended, and colors are overall less saturated because each time I added more color, I was really trying to go to a bare spot on the skein. Whereas on these two, you know, every, I went for bare spots, but I was also just going all over because that's what I had access to. Finally, 
On the last round that I did off camera, we had a little bit of intense iris left in the cup. So I just painted it on and added some um, sections that would be a little bit more repeating than what we have in the rest of the colorway. And so I just thought that that would be really fun. But if you go and cake this up, those sections, these sections technically could pool or be repeating, but I think rescained or caked, it would not be as obvious as it is here right now. And because I did try to space them um, in a bit of an irregular fashion around the yarn, just so that way they would be fairly random. Oh, but I, I love doing yarn mops, even if I can't replicate them exactly. Like I would love to create this on purpose, but I think it would be a little hard because there's something about not focusing on the yarn mop that makes it become so magical and beautiful. Uh, but I love all of these. <laughs> but clearly, none of these are the same colorway. There's subtle little differences, but there, there are differences. So I think I will need to label them each slightly separately um, so that way uh, so I think I will need to label each of them slightly separately for when I list them in the Chemnitz Creations Etsy shop, which, if you don't know, is my Etsy shop where most of the yarn that I dye in my videos ends up, and it's a really great way to support the content here on the Chemnitz Tutorials YouTube channel at the same time as getting some gorgeous hand-dyed yarn. The whole time I was dyeing this colorway, it really felt like a celebration to me. Not that we necessarily throw confetti on Hanukkah, but it just made me feel like that warmth and excitement of being all together, exchanging gifts, and celebrating with family. And so I hope um, if you're unable to celebrate the holidays with family this year, please see these videos as a hug from me to you and the warmest wishes as we head in to the new year. Twist it up, the difference between the skeins is not as uh, extreme as it appeared at the beginning during our recap. But uh, these colors. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz and from the bottom of my heart I want to wish all of you happy Hanukkah and thank you all for watching this video and the whole Hanukkah special series. If you've missed a night there is a playlist that has all of the Chemnitz Hanukkah videos from 2020 all together so you can go back through the entire journey and watch me dye all of the yarn. Please subscribe to the Chemnitz Tutorials YouTube channel if you aren't subscribed already. I don't regularly post nightly videos. My regular schedule is two videos a week on Tuesday and Friday mornings, um, but we do have special series like this along the way and live streams and unboxings and a whole lot of fun. And 2020 is not yet over and we have a lot more fun colors coming up. Thank you so much for watching everyone.